Welcome to today's vlogtober day two video. It's currently technically uh, like almost 3 a.m. in Paris. That's why the lighting's all weird because I was putting this off because I'm quite nervous to film this video. There's a lot for me to navigate through. So basically, I'm just gonna tell you guys about my experience with rowing and rowing in college and being injured and how I ended up here, but that's like gonna, that's a lot. So I don't know if I'm gonna do all of that right now. I might have to like split it up. We'll see. <coughs> Okay, you guys probably know I have a twin sister named Gretchen and we pretty much did all of our athletic endeavors together when we were younger. We both played basketball since we were like tiny and like swam and played volleyball and did tennis and like just all these random sports, tried soccer, tried a bunch of stuff. We were swimming on our swim team with our friend. She was telling us that she was going to like a meeting or something for rowing and we were like, what's that? Like, <laughs> what? She was like, yeah, no, like after the swim meet or whatever, I'm going to a meeting for like crew. And we were like, what's that? Like, what, what? <laughs> we like had no idea that we even had like a crew team, but it wasn't even like a school team, it was like a club. So it was a club like through the school. We were like, oh, okay, sure. Like, let's check it out. Like, why not? Always down to like look up more sports. So we went and we were like, okay, yeah, let's try it out. I kind of just like instantly fell in love. Oh, it's so hard to learn how to row. I just, yeah, I fell in love with the challenge. Just like the, the focus and like the feeling of it. Oh, I just love it. I instantly was hooked. And that was like at the end of eighth grade. I rode the spring of eighth grade, but then I was still swimming and playing volleyball and playing basketball. So it was kind of like juggling all of those. In the fall, I was playing volleyball. I was actually the captain. I was actually so bad though. Like, I don't know how that happened. Fun times though, it was really fun. I kind of just realized, I was like, okay, I think I really just want to try rowing. It was really fun. I think I just want to like buckle down and focus on that. So we both kind of just like slowly quit the other sport, went more into rowing. So my sophomore year of high school was like our first year that we just like rowed all year because there's like the fall, which has like head of the Charles and stuff. If you know rowing or you know, you've probably heard of that. It's like three mile race in the fall. So like all races in the fall are pretty long. And the winter you just do like winter training, like cross training, like biking, erging, running or weightlifting. And then in the spring you do 2Ks are just like the standard for like college and all, like most high schools. And then in the summer you also do like 1500 meters of 2Ks, which are like short little races and they're my favorite, like basically like sprints. So we just started rowing all year round in the summer too. So really like the most time I would get off was like two weeks maybe. Um, which is like kind of crazy to think about it now, but it was like it was such a fun time Like I really wouldn't have had it any other way Like I really just loved it like I was so passionate and I still I still am like I still love the sport a lot So that was like really fun But it was like crazy because when I first like thought about rowing I didn't think anything about like going to school for a sport like I kind of always thought it would be cool But you know, I didn't excel in anything so I was just like oh like it'd be cool But like I'm not pro probably not going to like maybe division three I don't I don't know what I would have done but like <laughs> It's like maybe swimming, like I don't know. I didn't really like think about rowing in college really until my junior year of high school because I was like, wait, I think we're actually like pretty decent somehow. <laughs> like I was like, oh wait, I guess all of our like hard work's paying off. And Gretchen and I went to California actually for youth nationals and a lightweight double and it was like the funnest time my whole entire life. It was so fun. It just like kind of like clicked for me. I was like, wait, I could like do this all the time. Like I could just like race and like be as fast as I can, like train hard and like sweat and like yes like all day every day i could do that i was like yeah i'm down <laughs> like sign me up that was a great time it was a great like learning experience and before then i had no idea like where we stood within the rowing community i was kind of just like oh like we're trying our best like we we got like some pretty good results some places but yeah so we went to sacramento for youth nationals and yeah i definitely just fell in love that was such a fun time we were in a lightweight double together and we like definitely surprised ourselves. I had like no hopes or expectations about how it was gonna go. I was like, we're just gonna try our best. Like, I don't know, I'm gonna have a good time. I'm excited to be here. I think we got fourth or something, which I was like shocked, like absolutely shocked. Like didn't even think we were gonna make it to the finals. Like it was crazy. A lot of people that beat us were like seniors and we were like juniors. And I was like, oh my God, look at us go. <laughs> That's exactly what I did. Yeah, so I was like, wait, this is awesome. Like, I love it. Like, I love the feeling of racing. I just love like putting in hard work and seeing it pay off. Like, I, I just like love working out. Like, yeah, I got like really into it and I would work out all the time. Like, not only at practice, which would be like two and a half hours a day, 
like six days a week but then I'd still work out on Sundays because it was the craziest thing like literally if I didn't work out I'd be laying in my bed and my legs would be like twitching like I would be like I need to move I need to move I need to move like like Sunday night I like couldn't fall asleep if I didn't work out so I would always like go for a jog anyways even though we were supposed to have like a rest day or whatever and then like most days I would like do extra minutes on top of practice just because I like wanted to get as good as I could you know like I don't know why not so yeah I was doing that and then yeah, the fall of my senior year was a really fun time. The boat just felt so nice. I usually um, stroked, so my back was like kind of starting to hurt. Spring of my junior year rowing, because throughout the spring and like the season, we would race like bigger boats, and I usually stroked. Like I was either like eight seat, seven or eight seat, um, either on port or starboard. Usually on starboard my first like four years of rowing but then when we went to our, the other club he didn't want it to be starboard stroke so i was rowing on port so i, I actually think that might have kind of messed up my back a little more but so yeah i was rowing on port and i think it's just like all the rush and everything like if you're in stroke sea or like the front of the boat or whatever it kind of just like hits you the most i guess it might have just been like a predisposition i don't know whatever but like basically my back was just hurting towards the end of like most spring seasons and i'd just be like oh like it's just like tired like that's normal it's like the part of the like lever that like pulls the oar so it was like it only makes sense like obviously it's under a lot of stress so i just kind of like write it off as being like normal but i wouldn't be able to like stand up out of the boat right away anyways that was like kind of like off-putting but i was like whatever really like, pushing past it yeah i was just chilling <laughs> and then uh senior year i was just like working out a lot like really trying to get that boat speed up so i was like trying to eat like really healthy really clean like we weren't racing as lightweights. The program we were in just had more open weight women on the team, so that was just like more competitive for us. So, but I still wanted to be as like lean as I could be, you know, like the less you weigh, the more you're able to pull, like that's the best, you know? So I was just kind of like about that and just like working out a lot, trying not to eat too much junk food or like just, I don't know, trying to be like good. But then I think it kind of got a little bit bad for me, um, probably around like winter of my senior year because my back was really really hurting so i wasn't really able to like train with everyone else like on the rowing machines so i would be like in the back of the gym like on like spin bikes <laughs> i would, like literally get chills thinking about it for actually i think it was like we had three months of winter training so it's like two and a half hours every day december through march until we got on the water <laughs> yeah that was a rough time so I'd just be like on the bikes every day watching them all row and it like literally like would tear me apart on the inside. Like I just feel so like sad and alone and like they're all getting faster and I'm getting slower. Why can't I row? Like what's wrong with me? Like whatever. So I literally like put in work on the bike for like two hours and I go back home and I go straight to the gym and I'd like go run and do the elliptical and like do all this stuff because I'm like they're getting faster. I'm getting slower. Like I'm not fit. Like blah blah blah. I can't like do what they're doing i'm not erging i'm just like on the stupid bike like whatever so i kind of was definitely like overworking myself and i definitely like wasn't eating enough because i was like oh like boat speed i want to be able to like beat people and like uh, like seat races and stuff even though we didn't even like really do seat races i was like i just want to be like as fast as i can whatever so that was like kind of not a good mentality kind of became like toxic um and i definitely like wasn't yeah i wasn't eating enough i was probably eating like 1200 1500 calories a day but i was like definitely working out like, at least two hours of cardio every day um so that was like yeah definitely not good and like over time it just kind of like really built up and i just got like the worst headaches like all of my senior year like i would be like literally like in tears like my head hurt so bad and i had no idea why like i went to so many doctors and i would be like like literally it just hurts like i have no idea why don't know when just randomly just always hurts like help and I literally got like MRIs and CAT scans and stuff and they were like, I don't know. They put like ink in to like be able to see where things were going in my brain and like nothing. And I was like, I'm literally a lost cause. Like, I don't know why. But it turns out I wasn't eating enough, which like if someone just told me that, like, I, I don't know. It would have been hard for me to change my habits at that point. But like, I would have tried at least, you know, like I was just like, oh my God, I'm like a lost cause. Like, so I just work out more. I don't know how, but I like tricked myself. I was like oh, it feels better when I work out. Like my head only feels better when I work out. So I'd like come home, be like crying. My head hurts so bad. And Gretchen would be like, where are you going? I'm like, I'm going to work out. So I'd like leave and go to the gym for like two hours, which would just like definitely in turn make it worse. And like, 
yeah, that was definitely a rough time. So like obviously my back wasn't getting that much better if I'm like overworking my body that much. But like meanwhile, I had no idea what was wrong with my back. I was just like, oh, it just like hurts. So annoying. Like why won't it just get better? So like senior year, my sister and I went on a couple official visits. I went to like three, three or four. Uh, Oh, we only went on three official visits, um, but we were like looking at a bunch of different places. I want to go to like school for rowing, like that's like my only goal. Like I was like, I have no idea what I'm gonna do in the future. Like I'm just gonna row. Like that's my only plan. Like I'm gonna go somewhere where I can row. Like somewhere the best place I can row, and then I'll just like figure it all out. Like that's what's gonna happen. So I was literally looking at schools for rowing because. Yeah, that's all I like wanted to do and that's all like I was passionate about at the time. So yeah, yeah, that was like probably not a good idea, but I don't know what else I would have done at the time. Now that I'm thinking back on it, but basically I ended up going to Boston University, obviously. That spring of senior year, I was like, well, I'm, there's just like no way I'm not like racing this spring. Like I'm racing, like I'm going to row. So like what else would I do? So I'm like pushing myself to like get back in the boat and like I finally worked my way back in and we went to youth nationals and stuff and that was like really fun. And then obviously my back was hurting, but I was like, whatever. And the summer usually gets better because we break down to like smaller boats. So like at the end of the spring, it's like kind of a little bit at a breaking point. Like my back would be like really hurting, but I'm like, okay, like I have like a couple more races, like I'll be fine. And then we'll like, it'll be the summertime and we'll break down into like sculling boats, which is like two oars rather than just like one side or the other side, which is like definitely like a lot of load on your spine, especially with like twisting like that, that good. So I was like, yeah, yeah, I'll be fine. Like that was like my mentality, like every spring, like since like junior year, I was like, okay, like I'll just get through the spring and then summer will come around and it'll all be better. So like, that's the goal. Um, so yeah, that's what I did. I like couldn't even like sweep in smaller boats. Like I tried a four and I was just like, yeah, I can't do this. So I was like in, a single and a double and a quad and my quad actually won Nadine Henley and that was like one of the happiest days of my life like that was such a good time um, I love all the girls that I was in the boat with and like now I literally like get emotional thinking about it because that was like my last sprint race and you like you guys don't get it like I don't know my goal in life is to find something that I loved as much as I loved rowing which is like gonna be really hard for me um, but yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. So that was actually like my last like sprint race, which those were like my favorite because it's like head to head. Like it's not just based off of times, which is like all fall races are just based off of your time because they're really long races and they're like windy and there's like so many boats in it. So you're not gonna be racing like 70 boats at head of the draw. I was like, down, like there's no way. So yeah, it's just based off of times. But in the spring, it's like, there's like heats and like, it's just head to head races and it's so intense and it gets you so fired up. That's like my favorite feeling ever. But yeah, so that was the last time I was in a head to head race, which is like, I don't know. I mean, it was a really good race and I like still remember everything about it, which is probably like really sad. Um, seeing as it was literally after my senior year of high school. So it was like two summers ago. Yeah, <laughs> like not this past summer or the summer before that. Oh my gosh, three summers ago. Yeah, I literally remember everything about it. I remember my like uh, bow seat. Bow seat is like the coxswain basically. It's like bow coxed because there's like four people in the boat but someone has to steer so it's the person in the back and I was like stroking. And she was like five for Henley Gold or whatever and I was like, I literally like almost started crying because that was kind of like a dream of mine since sophomore year of high school when my sister and I went and we just kind of were like, yeah, why not? Like, let's race at Emily. Um, <laughs> we totally didn't think we were going to do well, but then we ended up in the finals and we were like, what? <laughs> well, like, we don't know anything about this. And like, I think, we, yeah, we also got fourth in that. So that was like shocking and I was like okay I want to get Henley Gold like that's like my next goal so yeah I'm glad that I did that at least but yeah so then I went to BU and I was like definitely on a high I was like oh my gosh I'm killing it like but I was like oh my gosh everyone is gonna be so good like I was on the lightweight rowing team at BU so I was like oh my gosh everyone here is gonna be like all muscle just like so strong so into it like can't wait to like go work out with my new buddies like I don't know I was so excited so yeah we went to BU and it was like so fun in the fall I was like oh my gosh I'm gonna be like the bottom of the pack like my goal is just to like stick with it and not be like way behind everyone and we got there and I think probably because we trained like all summer pretty hard oh my gosh wow fun times we would literally have we had practice like 7 to 9 30 and then we would go straight from <laughs> practice uh, to hot yoga, 9.45 to 10.45, and then we go straight from hot yoga to work. 
11 to 7 and then we just like lifeguard all day and then like work out at night and then like wake up again and like go to practice like it was just like crazy um so we were in like really good shape so yeah we got to be you and i was expecting to be like bottom of the pack but i was like oh my gosh like i'm actually like pretty competitive like this is weird so that was like really cool except for <laughs> my freshman year so we have like like test weeks and i was sick for every single one of them <laughs> <laughs> like like a virus like out cold like in bed for a week so i was like what's happening like i don't know i kind of usually get sick like i'm prone to getting sicknesses like if something's going around i catch it first like that's just me unfortunately so that was like really frustrating because i was just like not able to show what i could do but i would like be at practice and my coach could like tell that i was like trying and like i don't know could <laughs> could pull hard i don't know had decent technique but yeah i was still like <laughs> pretty much like stroking most of the boats I was in like I was stroked like a four at head of the Charles my freshman year and then I was in the 1v for foot of the Charles and it was really fun and then we went to Princeton Chase and I stroked that but my back started hurting like it would just like hurt so bad during class and stuff like it got to the point where I couldn't like sit through class like I would have to like stand up like even right now it's fine though um but yeah, so that was like really unsettling for me. I was like, uh, like I know, like I'm getting good. Like I'm just like getting into the groove of things. I was getting really excited about it. Like with lift and everything, I was like, this is like my speed. Like I want to like put all of me into this. Like I can do this. I just love like being passionate about something, like giving your all towards it, you know? So I was really excited about it. And then I was like, uh oh, like my back's been feeling off. So I started going to the athletic trainers and they were like, oh, like it's just like, muscle spasms and I was like oh okay I can deal with that whatever so I just like kept growing and racing and whatever uh that was like probably halfway through the fall and then like towards the end I, yeah I, like couldn't sit through class like I was like I like literally cannot make it like I can't make it through like a 50 minute lecture like I can't do it so I like went back and they were like oh that's like weird okay I, like stop rowing then so I was like so upset because I was like no I want to row I like want to get better at erging like I want to do winter training for real but yeah so I didn't end up doing that because they were like oh yeah just like don't erg for now and so I just started biking instead okay the camera just ran out of space I'm sorry this is gonna be like the longest video ever but anyways so yeah they were like oh it's just like back spasms they're getting like core exercises to do like glute exercises to do like whatever stretches and I just didn't help at all <laughs> so I was like oh whatever like I'll just go back home for winter break and like get my act together I'm just gonna like work out a lot get really fast I was like I, I know I'm like already gonna be behind because they've all been erging and they're gonna erg all winter so I just gotta work out really hard stay as fit as I can so that I can like get back into rowing really quick in the spring <laughs> yeah that winter man that that's probably what really did me in for our training program we have like specific amount of like like cardio we're supposed to do type thing so I'd run two hours or plus like six days a week like all throughout winter like the whole our whole winter break we have like a month off for winter um yeah <laughs> and my back was like still messed up had no idea what was wrong with it and then we just like had this like weird shooting sensation when i was running but then it would kind of like fade off if i powered through the first 20 minutes it'd kind of just like be fine so i'd run outside literally every day and it'd be like 20 degrees and i'm like out there like chilling and like by the bike path i like loved it though like i used to hate running but then i started doing that and i just go like kind of based off of like my heart rate and like what i was feeling and i just kind of like sing the songs because who else is running on a bike path when it's 20 degrees out and there's like snow on the ground like no one so i'd literally just be like running singing like with a long sleeve and just like leggings on like literally just chilling so that was like actually really fun it was definitely like therapeutic in a way and like yeah definitely got the endorphins going um but then <laughs> oh after that so i went back to bu and they were like oh okay so like how's your back feeling and i was like oh well it's still hurting but like yeah whatever i was like yeah it's fine like i'm just gonna row it's fine and they were like oh like we should get this checked out and i was like yeah you're probably right because i like don't think i can sit through a class right now but like i would still row if i could but i I'm not gonna go to class, but I would row, just not go to class. Like, I was like, yeah, that's it. Like, yeah, I can just like drop out of school for now. I'm just gonna row. <laughs> that's not how things go. I went and got an MRI finally. It was the end of January, and they were like, oh yeah, like it's probably time for an MRI. And I'm like, I literally have been telling you about this since October. Like, what? Like, how? Why couldn't you do this then? But I was just like, oh, whatever. Like, just kind of thinking it was like fine, just like overworked type thing. And then I got like the results back, and it was like probably the worst day of my life. Like, not even exaggerating, like I said that, like, really low-key, but, like, yeah, that, two, the two day, two different days, I know the exact dates, that's, like, an issue, it was February 1st, <laughs> yeah, so, 
that was a really rough time. I got the results back and I have two herniated discs in my L4, L5, and L5, S1. And I was just like, oh shit. Like, I was like, I was like, okay, like that doesn't sound good, but what do I do? Like, I was like, okay, so how am I gonna run with that? And, but I was just like in a lot of pain, like you don't get it. Like I like couldn't walk, like it like would hurt to walk and like, I like couldn't sit at all like I, like even like standing sometimes would like hurt and if I walked for too long Then I like couldn't move like the next day and like yeah, it was just like really bad So yeah, it re really went like like 100 like me working out like literally like four hours a day like every day like tons of endorphins feeling really fit like whatever to like actually not being able to walk so that like you can just like tell like just like everything went kind of crashing and burning yeah that was a really rough time i definitely missed more classes than i went to all of that spring definitely just missed most of my classes that's all i can say i was like just in bed even the days that i felt like some days i bet i probably could have made myself go to class but i just felt so like helpless kind of when you're used to working out that hard for that long like every day and then you're just like, and then just all of a sudden nothing. Like I just was all of a sudden like cut off from doing everything. They're like, yeah, if everything hurts, don't do anything. And I was like, okay. So it was just like kind of helpless. That was a really rough time. And at the same time, I was trying to work with physical therapists that my coach had recommended that a lot of girls on my team had seen, but like the insurance like wasn't working. So basically I wasn't seeing anyone for like a month because I told the athletic trainer, I was like, yeah, I think I'm gonna try to see like this physical therapist. And then he like got mad or something and was just like, oh, like, all right, like whatever. Meanwhile, I'm like still texting him and stuff like, hi, I'm in pain, help. Hi, help, like whatever. And he would like literally not answer me. So I'd like go in and like see someone every once in a while and be like, hi, yeah, nothing's changed. Like help. Yeah, so that was like a mess. Like I was just kind of like floating around and like I honestly thought my coaches were gonna be there for me a lot more because I guess I was like doing pretty good in the fall. So they were really there for me. They were really supporting me. And then towards the end of the fall, they were like really worried about me and my back and everything. They were like, okay, we just like take as much time as you need. Like just, we just want to make sure you get better. And then in the winter, I was just kind of like on the back burner, which is understandable. Like there's a bunch of other people on the team. But then when I was going through that, like I just felt like really alone because everyone else on the team, like I, I wasn't at practice with them all winter. Like I wasn't at practice with them all spring. Like I wasn't I just like was like so alone and so not a part of the team anymore and like they were my only friends in the fall like you don't get like you spend like all day every day with them because like you have the same schedule and your classes like you're, you're just like running in and out of classes and like doing as much work as you can like going to study hall hours and like, like so literally they're the only people you're with but like in the fall everyone's just like trying to do good at run trying to like whatever trying to do this trying to do that so it's like kind of hard to make friends like i was friendly with everyone on the team but it's not like i was like really close with them like my only close friends were like Taylor and Gretchen, but like obviously I went to high school with them. So yeah, I don't know, friends by default, but then yeah. And then like not seeing any of them like through the winter, the spring and like, like if I did somehow make it out of bed, like walking by them, it'd just like kind of be awkward. And they're like, did you quit? Like what happened? And like, I feel like no one really knew what was going on. And then I also just feel like I missed a lot of bonding too, because I missed like the spring break training trip and stuff so that was like really hard for me because I was not sure if I was gonna go like obviously I like still couldn't work out and stuff so that was just like really tough so but yeah anyways so I like didn't see anyone for like a month after I got my diagnosis they were like oh yeah so we have like 20 discs like and then they like progressed me down to nothing and then I was like okay well since you're not really helping me I think I might go see like a physical therapist and then they just like stopped communicating with me and I was like oh word <laughs> perfect like now I'm just alone so it took me like a month to figure out uh, insurance and stuff before I could finally see someone outside of BU and that was like literally <laughs> a really tough day because I went there and I was like oh my gosh like I would get so excited about doctor's appointments like you don't get it I was like oh my gosh there's hope like I was like yes she's gonna cure me I'm gonna go row tomorrow like it's all better I'm gonna fix like things are great like it's all gonna be good like don't worry Lucy things are great like <laughs> so I like went to my appointment I just remember her being like if you were my daughter I would never have you row again like I don't even know like how people were like letting you row with this like, she was like if you keep like going like this like like what if you're not able to play with your kids when you're older like what if she was like you're not gonna be able to run again you're not gonna be able to like she's like you don't want to be in pain walking like blah blah, blah. and I literally just like was sitting there and I, it was just like all like hitting me and I was like like what like how did like this sport that I love so much just like kind of like destroy me but like obviously it's not the sport like it just kind of 
happened really fast and I just like kind of was pushing it to the side. I was like, oh, things hurt, like sports hurt, like pain is normal. And I think I have like a really high pain tolerance that I like guess I didn't know about. So like everyone's like, how, how did you like have that and like not notice? And I'm like, beats me like I don't know push through the pain guys like pain cave is where we live I don't know like you get into the pain cave and you dig deeper like that's what I learned so that's like what I did yeah that just like hit me really hard and I just remember on the uber on the way back I got in the uber and the guy was like like hi how are you whatever and I was like hi and then I called my dad and I just sobbed the whole way back and I like I was still on the phone with him when I got out of the Uber and I'm like walking through West Campus of BU just like sobbing like hysterical, like inconsolable, just like losing it. So that was like another really tough day because I was like so hopeful. I was like the second I get into physical therapy, like everything's gonna be fixed, like everything's gonna be better, like I'm gonna be solid, like things are gonna be great. And then that happened. So that was and not what I wanted to hear. And then, then I was kind of working with her. And she was like, well, what are your like goals and stuff? And I was like, my goal is to row. Like, I was like, have I spoken a single word to you? Cause if I have, then you should know. <laughs> like, that's like literally, that was me. Like, I was like, I don't care. Just like run my body into the ground, I guess. I don't care, I just want to row. Like, so she was like really not with me on my goals. <laughs> like she was like not having it. She was like, but you want to be able to be 50 years old and walk. And I was like, but I want to be able to race this spring. Like it was, yeah, it was pretty tough. Um, I was pretty stubborn. Uh, I would say passionate, <laughs> but stubborn is probably the better word. Um, oh my God, I'm literally talking so loud. It's actually like 3.30. Stubborn as always. So that was like really tough. Oh my God, yeah, so tough. And then uh, eventually she was like, okay, well like if this isn't really like helping that much, then we should talk about like other options. So. I went to Newton Wellesley Interventional Spine, shout out. I love how I just like spit that out right now. It was two years ago. Oh, two years ago, wow, like a year and a half. But so I went there and I got some back injections and it nearly killed me. It hurt so bad guys, like I got one in my SI joint and I'm not kidding when I say I like couldn't move my leg. I was like, oh, it's not gonna be that bad. And they like have like this like x-ray thing like to make sure that they're putting the injections in the right spot and then they have oh it was so bad so you're like laying down this way and then they have like the like x-ray screen right there so if i looked up i could see them like putting the needle into my spine so i was like oh screw it i'm gonna look that way like literally like, looking this way like pinching myself so hard i was like it's okay it's okay it's okay because they like don't like numb you or anything but um yeah so that was a rough time Oh my god, I just remember like it going, it took so long, they were putting so much like fluid in me, it just like, I was like, oh, for sure that was the rest of it, and then I just like feel more going, like, but I could like hear it, that was like, that was the unsettling part, like, I was like, I can like handle it, it doesn't feel good, oh, it doesn't feel good. like I was like literally gonna pass out, but I was like, but just like hearing it, that like freaked me out, anyways. Um, so I did that and then I was like, oh, I'm fine. Like I'm good to go And I was like, yeah, I'm gonna like hop up and leave and they like put me in a wheelchair. I was like Bro, and I was like, I'm good. I'm good. They wheeled me into this room and I was like, oh, I think I'm good And I like went to get up and I literally like almost threw up and like fell over at the same time and I was like help <laughs> So that was quite something but then it ended up that that one didn't help like it helped at the time because like the numbing cream and stuff but then it like didn't end up actually helping me. So then I went back for another set of shots. By this point it was, it was the end of April. So literally this whole time I just missed like pretty much all of my classes. Like I literally, I don't know how to explain it to you. Like I was nowhere except for in my bed, like at all times of the day. I was like nocturnal though. Cause like I would watch Netflix at night because I just sleep for so long that I'd wake up at like 3 AM like, oh, hey guys, I just slept for 17 hours, you know? Like it was, yeah, it wasn't a good time. And I was just like definitely in a dark place. But anyways, so, and then I got two more sets of injections in my facets, in my back. And so I got like two injections, two times. And that, bro, that hurt so bad. Like that hurt so bad. And at the end of the second set, I was like, oh my God, I'm finally like done. And then he's like putting in the last like bit of steroids or whatever, cortisone stuff. And my back just like pops. Like on the inside, it just like something like, and I was like, what? Like I was just like, what was that? Like, oh my God. 
never gonna forget that. That was the creepiest thing that's ever happened to me. Um, anyways, and now like still when I like go like that and like push my like back up and like lengthen my spine, it like still pops again in the same spot. And I'm just like, this is really eerie. But anyways, so yeah, my back's fucked up. And then I tried to get it better all summer. I was like, okay, yeah, my back's like hurt, but like I'm just gonna like ease my way back into things. Like I'm really, I'm gonna do my physical therapy exercises that I've been working on. Like I'm gonna like start w working out again. So I literally started off, like I'm not even kidding, like walking for like 15 minutes, like walking, cause I like cause I wasn't even walking around. Like when I would walk, it felt like like a dagger like stabbing into my like back. Like oh, it was terrible. Um, so yeah, I literally had to start off walking and then I would like walk forever and then like jog for like this much amount of time and like I have like my heart rate monitor on so I could see like how not fit are you Lucy? Let's get this better. Like I'd be like literally walking and my heart would be like 130. I'm like, yeah, things are great. I'm an athlete guys. So that was tough. Uh, definitely really hard to work my back up. That was really frustrating. I was like, I just need to be back in shape but I haven't worked out in six months. Like, yeah, tough six months, guys. Like, you don't understand. Like, that was really tough. And then to the fact that this all happened all over again, just wait, I'll just like make another episode. Is that like what I should do right now? Like, seeing as this is like already a half an hour of like footage. Um, so if you wanna see part two of division one rowing, slash rowing, messing up my body and making me not know who I am. Let me know. It was a rough time, I was questioning everything. Yeah, that was just freshman year summed up right there. That's all that happened. And then uh, sophomore year was kind of freshman year 2.0, believe it or not. <laughs> so that's a little bit more frustrating from my point of view at least. It's probably like comical by now for you guys. Oh, it was something. Yeah, it was something. <laughs> but if you guys enjoyed me just spilling my heart out for um, probably half an hour, <laughs> let me know and I'll make a uh, Lucy backstory 2.0 and like how I ended up here and what I'm doing now for my back, which is actually nothing, surprise. And I'm actually not working out again, surprise. <laughs> yeah. Things have been better, things have been better, but not in a long time. So I'm actually doing better than I have been for the past two years, which is crazy to think about it and say it out loud, but yeah. Now you know, the more you know, kids. And also, I don't know, I guess this could be in Lucy 2.0 story, but I also had some issues with like depression and like feeling really alone and kind of just like questioning everything and yeah, feeling very lost. So I don't know if you guys would like be interested in my thoughts or like how I'm dealing with that because I don't think, I don't know, like I definitely think it goes away. It definitely gets better, but it, I, like the thoughts are still kind of there. I don't know, I guess I'm not that far past it. Like it was really, really something I've been working with all summer. Um, but if you guys wanna hear about like that type of stuff, I know it's not like that fun to talk about, but if I could like help people, that's like my goal in this. If something feels off, get it checked out. Don't push through it. And like, listen to your body, but also listen to your body. Like at the end of the day, like nothing's worth being paralyzed when you're like 30, if you can like put that off if possible. Yeah, the thing that really freaked me out definitely was like her saying, do you want to be able to play with your kids? And I was just like, Right, like I can't even walk right now. I'm 18, I was 18, like I couldn't even walk. Like, yeah, that was a tough time. <laughs> I was Ubering everywhere. Like if I went to class, I would Uber directly to class. Like, and I would just like, like hobble up the stairs, like take the elevator and then just like Uber straight back to bed. Things were definitely rough, man. But like things do get better, things get better. And I'm like smiling through all of this right now, but I think that's kind of how I have to cope with it right now. Cause it still like hits really close to home. Like if I think about me never rowing again, like I could probably cry. <laughs> like, yeah, my eyes are watering right now. So yeah, I think I get like really emotional and I just like think about being on the water. So I think that's when you know you love something. <laughs> if you just think about it, like think about like the feeling and like the sound of like the orlock, like 
Oh my god. <laughs> I'm fine. Uh, basically what I'm saying is I hope it gets better. Um, but the fact that I'm able to talk about this without actually breaking down into tears, I'm impressed with myself. But I know in the next video if I make another half of this, I will cry. <laughs> A lot. So. Because this one I was just kind of telling you facts. But just like from two years ago, but like this next one would be a lot more recent and like everything I've been dealing with since then. So yeah, basically, spoiler alert, my back got worse. If that can happen while you're doing physical therapy for a year, let me know. <laughs> guys, guys, guys. Okay, anyways, happy Blocktober Day 2. I have to edit this video. I don't think I'm gonna sleep tonight. I've been really stressed out about filming this, like I kind of just was freaking out, so I watched Game of Thrones. Oh